Alrighty, welcome to another installment of the Algebra 1 videos. This one's section 9.3 about transformations of quadratic functions. And coupled with transformations, uh, it will lead us to the idea of vertex form. So this section will be relatively short, but there are three bonus videos which go into the possible transformations in more detail. So it'll end up being quite a long section. Okay, first is just what is a transformation overall? A transformation is any change in the position, shape, or size uh, of a graph. So you can you can have a parabola or a line or something like that. If you change the steepness of a line or you change the y-intercept, then you'd be changing it. You'd be transforming it in some way, making a change to it. Or for a parabola, you can move it around, you can stretch it out, shrink it, flip it over. All different kind of changes we can make. All the different kind of changes collectively are called transformations. So we're going to look specifically at three types of transformations in this section, and we're going to apply those three different types of transformations, mainly to parabolas, since we're in the chapter on quadratic functions, but we'll also look at applying those transformations just to lines, that way you can see a simpler version of it. Okay. So the first one is called translations. So translations, um, in language you're changing from one language to another, but in math you're changing from one place to another. So to translate, you're sliding the graph, which means its relative orientation, its shape, its look all stay the same, but the entire thing gets shifted or slid left or right or up or down. So you can kind of think of it as if you picked up the graph, you moved it over, and you set it back down. All of its relative properties stay the same, um, but it's in a new location. So its intercepts could definitely change. If you move it up or down, the y-intercept will change. And if you move it left or right, the x-intercepts will change, or any combination thereof. So translating something is to slide it left, right, up, or down, but keep the same shape. OK, the next one is, oh, sorry, let me go back one. The next one is a dilation. So dilation, the, the way to remember dilation is if any of you guys have glasses, when you go to the optometrist and you get your eyes dilated, it means it makes, they put little drops in there and your pupil gets really, really big. So you're changing the size here. You're not necessarily moving where it is, but you're changing the size. So a dilation is either a stretching out, increasing in size, or compression, decreasing in size, the, the size. And then if you change the size, depending on what kind of graph it is, it'll also change the shape. Um, and you'll see that a lot more in the in the second bonus video or third bonus video, whichever one deals with dilation, where you you can't change the size of something on a relative scale without changing the shape of it. So, dilations are primarily stretching or shrinking a graph. <coughs> and I'll put a note here: uh, you could stretch and shrink vertically along the y-axis. You could also stretch and shrink horizontally along the x-axis. We're going to only be looking at vertical. So changes in the y-axis stretching and shrinking. Not that you can't do horizontal, but in this class we're not going to do those. Okay, and the last possible type of change that we're going to be looking at in this class is a reflection. So a reflection, just like in your mirror, it's flipping the graph across a line. Okay, so some things are symmetrical, like a parabola is already symmetrical. So sometimes when you reflect a graph, nothing actually changes. But in other cases, depending where it is and depending on which axis you're reflecting across, then you can get a whole new graph. And so like I said, each of these three subtopics is its own separate video um, in the three bonus videos. But we're going to go through kind of all three really quick overview right now of how to make these changes to your graph and what they look like, do some example problems, and then you'll have to watch the other three videos or get to watch the other three videos um, later on. So this slide is super busy. I did not create it, but it's a fantastic summary, so we're going to go through um, each of the sections. So the first section here, let me kind of coordinate off, the first section here is called translations. And like we said before, this is sliding. So what might this look like? Okay, this might look like taking a graph and moving it up and down. If you want to move it up and down, you can add or subtract a constant at the very end of the function. Okay. If you add, the function will go up. If you subtract, the function will go down. So if your black line is the normal function, if you add like plus 2 right here, you're going to move the graph up 2. But this, the shape will be the same. So whoever made this slide actually did maybe a little bit of a poor job because this black line here and this uh, pink line here, they don't look like they have quite the same shape. Um, so maybe they didn't do the best job there, but the point is you're going to slide the graph up, but keep its shape the same. <clears throat> if you want to slide it down a certain amount, you just do minus a certain amount C at the end of the function. 
and you slide it down the same route. And once again, the shape changed. It should not change. So I'll, I'll not write it down, but the shape should stay the same. You just physically move it up or down by adding or subtracting a certain amount to the end of the function. Just like a y-intercept, right? If you add 5, you move up 5. Okay, Sliding left and right is very similar, but with one trick. To go left and right, you're changing the x-coordinate, not the y-coordinate. And so therefore, you're changing the input rather than the output. And because of that, uh, it's a substitution, and it has an opposite sign. So x goes to x plus c. If you make this substitution everywhere in the equation, you replace x with x plus c, you see the plus sign, so you might think, oh, it's going to go to the right. But actually, when you do x plus c, you're going to the left. <clears throat> okay, so it's counterintuitive, but if you change x into x plus c, you're actually sliding the graph to the left. So you can see this pink one here has been slid to the left by an amount c. And so we say x plus c goes to the left. It's kind of easy to show you why that's the case. If you use the zero product property and you set x plus c equal to zero, when you solve for x, the x value itself will have to be a negative number to balance out this positive c. And so the, the location of the intercept, which is where this cross is right here, will have to be to the left, even though you put x plus c. Just like before when we had factored form of a quadratic, when you solve this, the answer, which is where you plot the points, is the opposite sign of whatever you see. And likewise, if you go with a minus sign, you're going to slide to the right an amount. So here it's x minus c. So just remember they're the opposite of what you would think. So that's the general idea of translations. Okay, let's move on to dilations. So the next one here, dilations. Dilations. Okay, dilations are stretching and shrinking in the vertical direction. So if you multiply the entire function, this is really important that there's parentheses here, right? You're multiplying the entire function by a number larger than 1. Your graph will get vertically taller, okay? That will not change your y, or your, it won't change your x-intercepts, but it will stretch everything out. Okay, so this point got lifted up to here. This point got lifted up to here. This point got lifted up to here. So all the points got lifted up by a certain ratio, right? So for example, if you do triple three times it as much, then every value is three times higher, so it's vertically stretched out quite a bit. Okay, we're going to skip horizontal stretching for this section. If you choose a number smaller than one, then you're going to get shrunk down, okay? So you can take an, an answer, and all the points on there will be shrunk down by a certain ratio. So that's dilation, stretching and shrinking, making it taller or shorter in the vertical direction. And then lastly, we have the reflection section. So reflections are going to be right here. Reflections reflect over an axis. If you change the um, sign of the x value, you reflect over the y axis. And if you change the sign of the overall function or of the y value, because you could move this minus sign over here, so changing the sign of the y value reflects you over the x-axis. This is super easy to show because when this point reflects over the x-axis, it's actually the y-coordinate that changed sign. Does that make sense? So this was like a y-positive value, and this is a y-negative value, but we've reflected over the x-axis, so it's opposite. Likewise, if you reflect side to side, you're reflecting over the y-axis, but it's actually your x-coordinate that's changing. So if you change the sign of the x-value, you reflect over the y-axis, if you change the sign of the y value, then you're reflecting over the x-axis. We're going to skip their examples. All right, well, before we do the um, examples, we want to say how all these translations and shifts relate to uh, the vertex form of a quadratic. So this is the third and final form. So you can add this to as a vocab. Um, the third and final form of a quadratic is called vertex form. And as the name implies, it's a form which identifies the vertex. So we just talked about how shifting left and right and up and down um, can be transforming the graph. So if you start with the normal parabola, its vertex is right at the origin. If you shift it left or right, you're changing the x-coordinate of the vertex. So the x-coordinate of the vertex gets shifted by an amount h. So we need to write in here, very important, the vertex is at h, comma, k. Okay. So if you shift to the right or to the left, you're changing the h value. And then if you shift up or down, you're changing the k value. So um, I've put it two ways. One is the y-coordinate minus k equals the normal parabola. 
and then if you add k to both sides, the k pops over here, and this is more of what I described in the previous slides. This would be a shift up by k, this would sh be a shift to the right by h. So that tells you where the new vertex is, it's at the location hk. And then the a value in the front, just like before, if a is the stretch factor, right, a is the, uh, here's problem solving tips, we're getting almost ahead of ourselves, a is the shift, or not the shift, the stretch factor, and it also can include a reflection, okay? So let's look at the problem solving tips and tie them back into this formula. A is the dilation amount, so if A is larger than 1, it's stretched out. If it's smaller than 1, it's shrunken down. But also, if A is negative, that means you've reflected over the x-axis, right? So if you change the sign of the overall function, you've reflected over the x-axis. H and K are the horizontal and vertical shifts, which tells you where the new vertex is. So it turns out when you're graphing a quadratic, having it in vertex form is the best and easiest form for graphing because you know where the vertex is, you can plot that, you know the stretch factor, so you can use the shortcut over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, over 3, up 9, etc., and, and then just stretch or shrink it by whatever this stretch factor is. Okay. The last thing to say before the examples is what I said before, there's three bonus videos, and they're going to be assigned in class, but if you are feeling any confusion as you go through this section, those will be very, very fantastic at helping clear up any confusion because they take each of these three topics and break it down in its own video instead of kind of blitzing through like we did here. Okay, let's do some examples. For all of these examples, we don't have to graph them. All we have to do is identify what change occurred, so it's not so bad. So right here, you've got your normal parabola, x squared. So what does this mean? This means up to. So you take your normal parabola and you shift every single point vertically up to. Okay, here's the normal parabola, but x has been replaced by x minus one. So this means to the right by one. It's the x coordinate that's being changed, so that's left and right. And remember here that because it's a minus sign, we actually go to the right. Another way of asking this is, what number could you plug in for x? that would give you the intercept, or what are the roots, right? If you solve this using the zero product property, x has to equal one, so we move to the right by one. How about this one? This part here, see if you can s figure all these out before I tell you the answers. This one means down eight. Okay, another thing is, for those of you who don't like taking notes on the examples, I know it's tedious to copy these down, but you really need to write down the problem and then highlight the section, and then write down what it means. That's the best way to learn how to do these kind of problems, to identify any shifts or changes. Okay, number four. Okay, this one has a coefficient, an a value. It doesn't have any plus or minusing, so it's not been shifted left or right or up or down, but this right here means it's been stretched. Stretched by a factor of seven. So it's seven times taller. Every single point is lifted seven times taller. So instead of going over one, up one, you'd have to go over one, up seven. Okay, so this one is gonna be super, super tall and skinny if you were to graph it. Next one, this factor here means shrunk. Well, there's two ways to write it. I'll write first, shrunk by a factor of five, or stretched by a factor of one-fifth. So if you make something five times smaller, or one-fifth as tall, it's the same thing. But it still starts at the origin because it hasn't been shifted left and right or up or down. Okay, This one has two things going on. It's got a minus sign and it's got a 6. So the minus sign means uh, reflect over. The minus sign is to the entire function, so the whole thing is upside down. Say so reflect over the x-axis. Okay, So the whole parabola will open downward. And then the 6 means again stretch because it's a coefficient stretch um, by a factor of six okay let's move on here this one is going to be reflected upside down reflect over the x-axis great but it's also going to be moved up three and how do you know which one to do first? Well, you can always find the y-intercept by plugging in zero. So if you plug in a zero right here, you get zero, and then you get plus three. So let me just draw a quick graph of this one. This one you're going to go up three and put your put your vertex or your starting point or y-intercept. The vertex it was going to be here, but it's moved up three. And then the parabola normally would open upward, but we've reflected it, so now it's going to open downward. So the parabola will look something like this. And then you can solve for these two 
roots or vert, uh, roots here, x-intercepts, by solving this equation. Not so bad, we'll do that later. Okay, two more here to look at. This one has three things going on. It might be nice if we rewrite it first by changing the order into standard form. So this is negative one-half x squared plus five. Okay, so the minus sign means that we reflect it. The one-half means that we shrink it. And the plus five here means that we moved up five. So we start off by going up five, kind of like this one. Then we flip it over, again, kind of like this one. But then we shrink it by a factor of one half. So instead of going over one and down one, we go over one and down a half, etc., etc. Okay, last example. Okay, this right here, coefficient in the front, is a stretch factor. And I'm doing a lot of examples. I don't normally do this many because we don't actually have to graph them. We just have to say what's happening. And being able to identify what's happening is the biggest part of the, of the challenge. So this is a stretch by a factor of four. And then this part right here, what is that part representing? Well, again, it's the x coordinate that changed, so it's moving left and right. And because it's a negative sign, that means we actually moved to the right by one unit. Okay, so now let's take a look at what some of these graphs look like. In these, we don't have to graph them, we just have to match them. So let's first look at the first one. Okay, the plus two, what does that mean? <clears throat> That's like a y-intercept. It's not actually necessarily the y-intercept, but in standard form it is. So down two, so it can't be this one, that's up two. can't be this one, that's up two. So it's got to be this one here, because this is down two. And then the coefficient is a two, which means it's stretched out. So normally from the vertex, you'd go over one, up one. But in this case, we're going to go over one, up two. Normally, you'd go over two, up four. But in this case, we're going to go over two, up eight. And you can see that kind of matches up where it would be. So this first one here is B. Next one, again, it's got a negative two as a, a shift, so down two, we've taken it from the origin, we move down two. But this one, we're stretching out by a factor of one half or shrinking by a factor of two. So instead of going over one, up one, we only went over one, up a half. Instead of going over two, up four, we went over two, up half of that, which is here, etc., etc. So again, this one fits perfectly, and this is D. The next two are both up two, of course. So from the origin, they've moved up two. From the origin, up two. Now this one is negative, which means it's been reflected. So this one is also negative, which is why the two remaining choices both open downwards. They've been reflected upside down. And now the question is, which one is which? This one is a factor of one half, which means it's shrunk. So over one, down a half. Over two, down half of four, which is two. So C here is the one that's shrunk by one half, which means A is stretched out. Okay, so just a few examples of identifying reflections, stretching, shrinking, and sliding up and down. And that's it for this video. Like I said, go ahead and check out the other bonus videos and expect that this section will invest a little bit more time than normal. And that's okay. It will, it will lead to a lot of learning and understanding. All right, see you in class.